Good evening to everybody around the world. This is Kelly Stamps. If you are a returning subscriber, thank you. Thank you for coming back. If you are new, welcome to the Stampede. Hello, my name is Kelly Stamps. I am an awkward, skinny black girl living in New York and I'm allergic to cashews. I am emotionally unavailable and apparently funny. So welcome to my channel. My channel mostly consists of vlogs, but I wanted to do a more helpful video today. Not that my vlogs aren't helpful because you know, I'm helping you through your depression, whether you know it or not. But given the amount of direct messages I have on Instagram, I thought why not make a simple, helpful, informative video on how to start and maintain a YouTube channel when you're starting from scratch. As you can see, I'm not blonde, I'm not Australian, I don't have huge tits, so you're probably thinking, damn Kelly, how do you do it? Well, there's a formula. And there's also just a natural innate talent. You either have it or you don't. And I think I have it. But if you don't have it, that is okay because there are ways to start your channel and create a following from zero. So I'm going to sit down here on this lovely table and give you some pointers. I have my little Muji notepad here and Muji pen and Muji puffer, but you know, I'm not trying to flex or anything. I just did. I have a list here of things that I think are highly important to starting your channel. Thumbnails. Number one, thumbnails are highly important. Why? Because it is the first impression of your channel, the first impression of what your video is about. And overall, it is the deciding factor between if someone will click on your content or not. Get a crisp, clear thumbnail. Put some text over it. You all found me through my moving video. Why? Because I had a badass thumbnail. I was in front of a river. I was turned around. You can see a little bit of my body. And I was twisted like this, I believe. Kind of like, mm. And that was the thumbnail. This is the perfect example of a quality thumbnail. I had my body in it. It wasn't taking up the whole shot. I wasn't like, look at my body. I'm so snatched. No, 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 no. The focus was the background. I took that photo, I put it onto my favorite app, VSCO, otherwise known as Visco, and I sharpened it, I put a filter on it. My favorite filter to use is C6 currently, or L6. They're just vibrant colors that bring out the reds and the oranges. If you don't know how to make a custom thumbnail, just keep watching right now. Let's make an example. This is going to be a thumbnail right here. You can, of course, get a friend to take a picture of you, but I find this is much easier because I'm actually showing what the video is about. So. I have my laptop here. This video is about editing and YouTube. So let me just make myself look a little nice for a second. All right, I think I got the shot. Take that photo, airdrop it to your computer if you have a Mac, if not, I'm sorry. Open up VSCO, edit it to your liking. I like to bring out pops of color, sharpen it a little bit, save that photo airdrop it to your computer, and open up pickmonkey.com. I use this website all the time to do overlays like this. You can make things pop up on the side. Import your photo into PicMonkey. You're going to go to the crop tool. Now, back in the day, you had to actually know what the dimensions were for YouTube thumbnails, but I don't even know what that is. So, PicMonkey made it easy. Go to crop, select, you're going to scroll down to YouTube thumbnail. This automatically crops whatever size photo you had to a thumbnail photo. But, you know, if you're like me, you don't want just a plain thumbnail with just a pretty picture. Let's throw some text over it. Go to the text tool. I like to use Arial because it's simple, it's clear, or there's another one that looks kind of 70s-like. Um, I usually use the color white or something pretty like a dark blue. Throw it right over the thumbnail, and wow, look at yourself, you are a YouTuber. Now compare this thumbnail to the ones that YouTube offers you when you're uploading it. They just give you weird video stills, which are usually like, this is how I make every single thumbnail of mine. I love doing custom thumbnails, grabs your attention. It's beautiful, it's crisp, it's clear, clean, clear, under control. All right, next up, my next advice to you is to treat your YouTube channel like a business from day one. What do you have if you are a business owner? Don't say debt. Don't say lack of sleep. No, you have a business card. Business card. All right, so I went to Zazzle.com, got this cute little box. It has 100 business 
Okay, focus. So I paid $21 for Zazzle to send me this box of 100 business cards. A few are missing, clearly, because I have been giving them out. It is fully customizable. You can put whatever you want on it, literally anything. This is the back, it is white. It says, Kelly Stamps, professional meme. That is my email for business only. Oh my goodness. I cannot tell you how many emails I get a week from thirsty guys saying, hey, I seen you on YouTube. I thought you was cute. I wanna ask you on a date. Like, this is a business email. This is for when, you know, Muji wants to reach out to me and send me free jackets and socks and underwear. So please, please respect my wishes. Do not send me personal emails through this. This is for business only. Anyway, the link is on the bottom. I love this business card. You know what's funny about this is that I give it to people and then they're like, oh, that's cute. And they give it back. Like, no, 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 that's yours to keep. My next piece of advice is kind of simple, but hard to understand for some people. Only post good content. Similar to myself speaking amongst other people in a crowd, I think before I speak. I ask myself three things. Is this useful information? Does anybody care? Am I benefiting society whatsoever? If you think about those three things, I guarantee you your videos will get views. I started off doing hair videos in the beginning before my videos started to get some traction. I had only about 100 to 200 views on each video, mostly from women who obviously are buying hair extensions. Now, that is a very specific demographic. I'm trying to do world domination. You can't do world domination only with 18 to 20 year old black girls who are obsessed with AliExpress hair. I love you all, I am one of you, but World domination is the plan, remember? I want everybody in the whole world to enjoy my content. So I never make anything super specific. Your first five to 10 seconds of your video matter the most, the absolute most. Do not wait until the last minute to put in your best joke. I've made this mistake on other videos and they don't have as many views. The beginning is very slow, it's drawn out, and at the end all the action starts. But, you know, people have the attention span of a five-year-old naturally on YouTube. So, you know, you have about 10 seconds to impress the average viewer. Make those five, 10 seconds count. I do crazy introductions. I do gymnastics. I put a good bop in the background, which leads to my next topic, having a good bop. You need to have good music if you're going to have music at all. I play around with iMovie bops. My channel is very much a joke at this point, so I don't care about having the best tunes. It is getting very dark, so I need to wrap this up rather quickly. It is a struggle to find good music for your YouTube videos. That is no secret, but I will let you in on my secret. I like to go on YouTube and search this keyword, aesthetic music packs, aesthetic music for videos. There are people who upload popular SoundCloud artists who do not have, you know, the copyright issues that people like Beyonce face. For example, one of the most popular SoundCloud artist people's name is like Joaquin, or I think it's Joaquin, let's just say it's Joaquin Karud, and he has a lot of instrumental songs. Here's a little secret. Um, most SoundCloud artists are living in their mom's basement or they're at home or they're in school, whatever. They're not big time people like Beyonce. They make great music though, so we're going to use that for our videos. But we are also going to credit them because you have to be fair. For example, my moving video was fabulous because the first 10 seconds drew you in. I was on a rooftop, I did a weird cartwheel, I showed the skyline, and it had a great tune in the back. It said, put your head on my shoulder. I found that song, Put Your Head on My Shoulder, by searching aesthetic video music, aesthetic vlog music, whatever. It came up, it was a remix of someone on SoundCloud. I copied the link, I put it into one of those illegal websites where you, you know, uh, what's the word, convert something to MP3, whatever, dropped it into iMovie, boom, I have killer music now. Okay, it is getting rather dark, so I need to say one last thing for you guys. My last tip for you is one that actually really helps me a lot. Leave comments on popular YouTube videos, but not just anywhere. I'm not gonna go to like Emma Chamberlain and be like, hey guys, I'm a small YouTuber, check out my content. No one cares, okay? 
I have a favorite YouTuber, for example. Two of my favorite YouTubers would be Eric Conover and Jessica Clements. They both are New York-based YouTubers. I go to their videos as soon as they upload one. So you need to turn your notifications on in order to do this for these people. As soon as Jess drops a video, boom, I am the first comment. I comment something genuine. Jess, I love your content, keep up the good work. This sounds simple, but with my good Google profile photo and my ridiculous name, Kelly Stamps, people are inclined to go to your profile and see, oh, what is he or she doing? Sometimes I leave a comment like, you've inspired me actually to start my own channel, which is true, it's not a lie. I'm not spamming them, I'm just being honest. You inspire me every day with your content. Thank you so much for doing this. I appreciate it. Do not say stuff like, who's a small YouTuber, comment below. When I leave these comments, I give myself a little thumbs up because, you know, someone else is probably gonna go thumbs up also. Next thing you know, I have 30 thumbs up on my comment, then people comment saying, hey, your channel's pretty cool. It's happened time after time after time. So, figure out your little niche. Mine is uh, obviously New York themed videos, lifestyle. Every week I say I gain about 12 subscribers by doing this, so it is highly important. Do this, I guarantee results. This video has to come to an end now because it is pitch black and I am a black person. I'm going to fade out into the darkness, but I would like to end this by saying one more thing. I dropped my first major video in late January. As of right now, it is October 14th. I am officially monetized. It took me five months to be approved for monetization. It took, actually, it was July 27th. I got this email saying, woohoo, uh, YouTube would like to congratulate you. You are monetized now. I had to reach 4,000 watch hours. That is very difficult for a new YouTuber. So you need to make sure that you get that one catchy poppin' viral video going because it is hard to reach that threshold. Once you reach that threshold, you can get monetized, but you can't even get money yet because you still need to reach a payment threshold. So you need to make a minimum of $100, which is very difficult to do. All in all, this took me five months and I will be getting my first YouTube check, finally. Soon, actually. I'm just waiting on direct deposit to go through, which is kind of annoying. But anyway, I'm just giving you my real life results. I'm a living, breathing person. I started from scratch. Just me, myself, my camera, and my crazy thoughts in my head which became killer videos. Stay consistent, have a schedule. Um, your subscribers will start to call you out if you don't. For example, one of my favorite subscribers, I believe her name is Jay Baby. She has a thumbnail with nails in it. And she said, how are you gonna not upload for you know several days and just drop a four minute video like we are some unwanted stepchildren? People care. And if you stick with the schedule, you'll be as addictive as a Netflix show. I'm trying to upload every Tuesday now because that is what works with my schedule once a week. This is my plan and this is what has worked out for me thus far. I am standing tall at 4,400 subscribers as of right now. It's crazy that 4,400 people even want to see my face every week. That's insane. Um, thank you very much. A lot of this is you know, dependent on subscribers coming back, being engaged, myself being engaged, not just ignoring people. I actually engage with almost every single comment when people drop it on the video. Let your subscribers know that you care. And this is the formula on how to start your channel with zero subscribers and be successful. Hopefully I have inspired you to start your own channel because this is pretty fun. And honestly, I used to be very depressed all the time, but this has given me something to do. I like sitting down for hours, two to three hours on average, editing a video, putting it out there, and making people happy all across the world. That's pretty crazy to me. And please keep supporting my channel and my goals for world domination. Mwahaha.